Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And in this particular video, I want us to talk about Raila Odinga's bid of becoming the next chair of the African Union Commission and the entry of two other candidates, Fauzia Yusuf of Somali and Mohamud Yusuf of Djibouti. Will Raila Odinga succeed in his bid? For those who have been following Raila Odinga's bid, late February, I think it must have been mid-February, Raila Odinga officially declared his interest in the seat. <coughs> It is also actually appalling to see African, young African people drowning in the Mediterranean in search of greener pastures out of the continent. This is something that can also be reversed. Those are, the, those are the ones that can get to the Mediterranean hmm. from Paris and the Sahara. Yeah, <laughs> before they get to the Mediterranean. But all the same, the fact is that they, they end up all dying. It's a tragedy that ought to be reversed. And because of all these considerations that I, I am inclined to accept the challenge, uh, should the, the leadership of Africa uh, want my services, I am ready and offer myself to be of service to this continent. And I've asked my friend to continue to be a good ambassador. Uh, and, and talk to other people elsewhere. I don't want to say much more than that. And therefore today I, I want to make it pu public that I'm ready, yes, to go for the chairmanship of the African Union. Thank you. And on that particular day, Renu Dinga was accompanied by former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo. And I paid very close attention to Olusegun Obasanjo on that particular day. Obasanjo was very clear that they were looking for someone who is either a former head of state or head of government, a former president or a former prime minister. Renu Dinga fitted the bill. At the uh, local level, at the national level, at the continental level, is our continental organization, the AU. So if in less than a year there should be a change of button at the AU level, um, maybe some of us should take it upon ourselves to assist our incumbent leaders to make sure that we look and search and advise. And so part of my visit was really three. One, Brother, Brother Laura Raila is uh, a friend of many, many years. Third is what I said earlier on. Now, can we be looking? Um, we need um, a person, man or woman, who has experience, who understand uh, the situation we are in, who comes from a background that can uh, make uh, a difference, and um, uh, of course, that consultation means now the people that I from my own understanding of the situation and uh, what I know of Africa, I haven't been involved with Africa for more than five decades. Um, what sort of people? Some time ago, I was one of those who midwived because we believe that people who have held the position of head of government either at the prime minister level or at the presidential level 
will be able to knock at the door of incumbent prime ministers and uh, presidents without much ado. And uh, such people uh, will probably be the right person armed with other attributes uh, at this particular time. And um, uh, as I was saying, uh, we midwife Konare in some years back. And uh, maybe at this time we should be looking at that sort of. But whoever we look for must come from a country that is is not of extreme extreme in any sense and uh, where there are no much antagonism against such country then a week later Reno Dinga and William Samoy Arapruto went to Uganda where they met with Yoweri Museveni and according to Raila Odinga, Yoweri Museveni agreed to support him and Museveni agreed to even be the one to propose his name. So Kenyans were sure that Raila Odinga's bid was headed in the right direction. But there were other challenges. I think there was the issue of Northern Africa and Eastern Africa. Then in their own wisdom, the Africa Union agreed that this time round it was going to be the turn of Eastern Africa. Again, that favored Raila Amolodinga. And most Kenyans believed that the job was being prepared for Raila Amolo Odinga. And of course, there was also the, the requirement, the gender requirement, which was also removed. Because remember, Mohamed Faki, the current chair, is a man. And therefore, if it was about rotational, then this time it would have been a woman. So the AU also removed that requirement and made it either gender, which also favored Raila Amolo Odinga. Then after some time, Somali also declared their interest through their former Minister for Foreign Affairs, Fozia Yusuf. Most Kenyans thought that, okay, that was not a big deal. Then recently, Djibouti also declared their interest in the race through their Foreign Affairs Minister, Mohamud Yusuf. Mahmoud Yusuf has been Minister for Foreign Affairs in Djibouti since 1990s, which means when it comes to diplomatic issues, he's well conversant. But will that affect Raila Amolo Odinga? That is exactly what I want us to figure out in this particular video. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, how will the entry of these two other candidates affect Raila Amolodinga? The truth of the matter is that we still don't know. Maybe there's another candidate who is also coming and might declare we still don't know. But we want to assume that the three candidates will go up to the ballot. How will their entry affect Raila Molodinga? Number one, it's going to create division in the Eastern Africa. I know when you talk of Eastern Africa, most of you assume that we are only talking of Uganda, Tanzania, uh, Rwanda, maybe Burundi, the known East, East Africa countries. That is not the case. Eastern Africa has 16 countries. Let me just name a few of them. There is uh, Burundi. There is Comoros. Djibouti falls there. Eritrea falls there. Ethiopia falls there. Kenya falls there. Madagascar falls there. Malawi falls there. Mauritius falls there. Mozambique falls there. Rwanda falls there. Seychelles falls there. Somali falls there. South Sudan. Tanzania. Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Those 16 countries are falling under Eastern Africa. So if Raila Odinga was the sole candidate, Raila Odinga was going to be assured of majority of these votes. 
That is the honest truth. But now we are talking of Somali entry. And now we are also talking of Djibouti entry. Definitely they are going to affect Raila Molodinga, even if not in a big way, but to some extent. So I don't understand the rationale behind fronting these two other candidates. But of course for Djibouti, it's not the first time they are fronting candidates against Kenya. They've fronted candidates against Kenya before. Maybe there's a beef between the two countries. But they can't just allow Kenya to front candidates. So that division is what Obasanjo was talking about. They didn't want, they really wanted just a consensus. People to agree that this time is going to be East African time. And this time what you want is a person who is a former head of state or something like that. Then that was going to mark the end of the story. Then Relu Dinga was going to be elected. And, and I think he mentioned like they did that to, was it? Who was that? Former, some, former chair of Africa Union Commission. I think from, was it from Mali or Cameroon? Something like that. So that's going to be the first challenge. The division in the Eastern Africa. Of course, we'll wait to see. If Uganda will uh, carry their hands and front Raila Odinga, would be good. Through Museveni, because Museveni is uh, well established and I think he has a, a bit of command. But if you look at those 16 countries forming the Eastern Bloc, some of them might actually side with Djibouti. The second challenge is going to be the language aspect. The language aspect. As far as language is concerned, Red Odinga speaks Swahili, he speaks English, Red Odinga speaks German, fluent. There is no German speaking country in Africa. I am not so sure whether Red Odinga speaks fluent French, but there is Francophone countries. These are 26 countries. And these 26 countries, their official language is French. The Djibouti candidate is fluent in English, French, Arabic. So unless Raila Odinga will convince the Francophone countries, I know some of them will support him already. I think uh, there are some other countries which have expressed their support already. But Raila Odinga will now have to focus on this. And I think that is what the Djibouti candidate was banking on, the Francophone. Because we are saying, okay, it is the turn of Eastern Africa. Then Djibouti is presenting a candidate who is speaking your language, is communicating your language. So let us wait and see. So that's the second challenge which Raludinga is going to face. I know the specific countries, I think there must have been 11 or 10 countries in Africa where Islam is the dominant. Now, if you play with, uh, with the language, then you add a bit of religion. It can sway because it's going to reach a point where each and every single vote is going to count. The only advantage so far is that we now have two, two people who are already Muslim. So that will work in favor of Raila Morodinka. But the truth is, that's also another factor. And of course, the last issue, which is going to be the elephant in the room, is the diplomatic experience. If you read the, the letter where all the announcement which Djibouti made regarding their candidate, they were very clear that their candidate is the most qualified, being a diplomat, having served that long, his training and the rest. If you look at the history, and the education background of Fauzia Yusuf, the Somalian lady. Again, well ground, grounded as far as diplomatic experience is concerned. Raila Odinga has worked with AU as the high representative for infrastructure. Raila Odinga has been, been a prime minister of the Republic of Kenya. But of course, Raila Odinga is well known legible as far as Africa is concerned. He's a pan-Africanist, which actually is the main reason why most people will vote for him. I just wished these young leaders were going to vote. Most of them would have voted for Raila Odinga. But I know 
some countries are not going to to <laughs> where coup happened recently they will not really vote they are, they are they are being bad i'm told even sudan will not be voting so some those are some of the issues but i am optimistic that at the end of the day Raila Odinga is going to emerge the only threat which Raila Odinga was going to face was that of Jakaya Kikwete if Jakaya Kikwete were to declare his interest today that's going to change the equation for Raila Amolo Odinga but as long as Jakaya Kikwete is not going to declare i doubt if these other guys will be able to outsmart Raila Amolo Odinga and if they will be able to outsmart Raila Amolo Odinga then it means high level politics at I, at high level politics at AU. I don't know what you think. Do you think Raila Odinga will be able to win? Forget about Kenyan politics. We look at it from that level. Until next time, this is Lima Queen. Bye bye.